Hi, I'm Deborah, and today I am here to talk to you about how to get paying clients. So for the past, I want to say 10 years, I have been doing business online, and I've had clients from all over the U.S. and overseas. And when I speak with clients, I can always detect whether they're uptight and stressed out about their finances. And it's the way that I ask questions and the way they answer those questions that helps me to understand whether or not they are serious or whether they are, um, you know, apprehensive about the business because they either lack money or they don't feel like they can afford my services. So I'm very sensitive as to what, how they're responding to what I'm asking them and the tone of their voice. I can always tell whether or not they are uneasy about money based on the questions they ask me and the way the conversation goes. So I would say, um, I would advise you, if you are starting a business, always start a business and conduct your business based on customer service and customer care. And the reason I say that is because a lot of decisions that people make are going to be based on how they feel um, you feel about them. So what I mean by that is if they hear um, you know, that you're a happy, upbeat person and that you are readily um, able to answer their questions, address their concerns, and help them um, overcome, you know, their, um, you know, objections. You're going to have an easier time getting clients. Most of my clients, I would say 99.9% .9 of my clients are other than African American. So the majority of my business is with all kinds of people, people um, that are from other countries, um, Caucasian people, and I really have um, African American or black clients. And usually the conversation goes like this. They'll call me and they'll start asking, you know, for a service. And based on um, the price point, I can always tell whether or not they're going to buy. Because um, just recently I had a gentleman um, that I was working with and he contacted me and you know we talked about his needs, what he wanted done. And so as the conversation went forward, he started asking me about the price. And so I began to explain to him what the price was and um, gave him an opportunity to make his objections, to which I got none. And so in a lot of situations, when you're talking to people and they're asking you uh, for a service and you explain to them the service and you explain to them the price, you can, I can always detect if there is um, objections or if they're comfortable. And after a while, you start to hear the difference because many times when I talk to clients, they immediately, you know, they, they freeze up, they get tense, their voice is tense, and, you know, they start sounding like a different person. And I'm like, well, if we're talking about money, um, what has changed? And it's the fact that we are talking about money. We're talking about um, exchange value for value so services for money and in a lot of instances they take it personal um, they want a price and then when you give them the price then they get upset angry um, turned off because of I would say because of the mindset um, and lack you know if they don't have the resources then they have a tendency to take what I'm telling them personal versus looking at it objectively. And um, when you need a service or a product and you know there's a, there's a, a, a 
certain uncomfortability that comes with, um, you know, consumerism. Some people who have money and have the resources, they come across totally different. And I didn't realize it until I talked to this gentleman and I was um, discussing it with my son. And I was saying, you know, when I was talking to Mr. And I'll say Mr. Sean, and I was explaining to him the price. His voice inflection never changed. Um, he didn't appear tense. He didn't appear upset. He didn't appear angry. And um, the price was not, you know, it was not inexpensive. But I never uh, detected any stress, you know, in his voice. And so a lot of times people aren't aware how they come across because a lot of times when you talk to people and they need a service or they want to purchase a service, um, they have a tendency to want it until they hear the price. And so at that point, then um, they don't understand value for value because a lot of times people don't realize um, in terms of time, okay? So if people call and they want to talk to me one-on-one -on -one and say they want coaching or they want a strategy session and they ask me about the strategy session, I explain to them exactly, you know, that they need to come to their strategy session with their questions. They need to research, you know, the information that they want from me. And then when we get together, um, based on what they tell me they need or what they want, then I will sit down and I will map out a strategy. And then I will also answer their questions, give them an opportunity to go back to take a second look at everything that I've given them. And at that point, they can come back for another 30-minute session. So I break it up in 30-minute sessions um, if they choose, or they can just do the whole hour. And then as a bonus, I give them a 30-minute Q&A where they can come and they can ask me any question based on their experiences, and I will have an answer for them. Um, and so it's basically having an ear, you know, based on your ideas, and there may be things that you haven't completely thought out that I can um, give you a perspective on or show you, well, what about this? What about this? Give you options, you know, because you may be looking at it one way and I may be looking at it a totally another way. And hopefully um, my expertise will put you in a mindset where you can take advantage of things that you may not have considered, okay, on your own. So that is why um, I feel like in business, you have to you have to offer your service or your product to, you know, the marketplace. And um, I never tell people that I have a black business and people never refer to me as a black business because I'm in business to help people. Okay. And the majority of the time people, when they come to me, they are very comfortable because I'm very personable and I'm direct and I'm able to tell them what I can do for them without stumbling over my words. And I can just tell them exactly, you know, what I'm about. And if that's a match, you know, great. And if not, so be it. But I think that you can't marginalize yourself in business. Um, you have to, you have to serve, you know, the public. And so the public is, comes from diverse backgrounds. And I think when you limit your business by saying you are a black business versus a business, I think that there are limitations that you set on yourself as far as your experiences, as far as the people that you are in a position to help, and as far as your income. You put yourself in a very, a very, vulnerable state, okay, because um, there may not be enough people in your particular niche 
to help you to succeed. They may want to do business with you, but they may not have the resources to do business with you. So you have to be open to the marketplace. It's just like when you're online, if you're selling um, a bracelet or you're selling a pair of shoes, I, as the buyer, I'm not concerned about what color you are for the simple fact that first of all, I don't even see you. I don't know what race you are. I don't know what denomination you are. I don't know what religion you are. And at that point, all I'm looking for is a product or a service. So it doesn't matter to me if you are African-American, Mexican-American, um, you know, Irish, Italian. At that point, all I'm looking to do is to do business. And I'm looking for something to fulfill a need that I have. So at that point, all I'm concerned about is if the product fulfills, you know, the need, um, the price point and how it's going to be shipped or how it's going to be delivered. And none of the other stuff matters. And that's what I like about the Internet is it is an equalizer. It doesn't matter who's on the other end as long as it fulfills the need that I have. So I think that that is something you should strictly take into consideration when you are you know looking to start a business you have to get beyond you know certain things you have to change your mindset you have to read and you have to educate yourself and you have to learn how to speak in terms of you know whoever comes to you because at this point it becomes inbound so a lot of the um, you know clients they come to me versus me going to them and so that changes the dynamic in business is when you're in demand versus chasing, you know, and hunting for customers. Customers are readily coming to you. And so I, that's a, a big takeaway for me because I've looked at business both ways. And what I've realized is that the more people you can serve in a marketplace, the more successful, successful the business will be. And if you don't put limits on your business to say, I only serve, you know, um, a certain demographic, I think that you'll open up your ability to um, network and to relate to all kinds of people. And I think when you limit yourself and then things don't go as planned, then you're, you know, you're down and you're down on yourself. But you have to realize that some demographics are not fit for your business, especially if, you know, they don't have the monetary uh, wherewithal to purchase, you know, what it is you're selling at whatever price point. So you have to be, um, you have to be open to, um, you know, expanding and scaling your business. And in order to do that, you must serve more uh, people, you know, in the, uh, marketplace and that makes your business stronger it makes you um, I think more aware of people's needs and it makes you more sensitive you know to the marketplace and so that puts you in a better position so please go to the links below and check out um, my links on uh, business credit um, Uber Eats uh, I'll have a link if you want to set a one-on-one -on -one consultation with me. And I also have a link to my uh, Patreon page. Please go and join. I'm doing a series on how to start a moving business. But this is Catherine Weathersby, and I'm signing off. Thanks for watching. And please subscribe, like, and share. Talk to you guys soon.